Think Yourself Rich by Joseph Murphy. One of my favorite books, The Power of the Subconscious Mind, has been one of the most transformational books that I've ever read. It opened my mind up to the deeper understanding of some of the principles that I learned in Think and Grow Rich. Now, there was a lot over the years that I had reflected upon when it comes to the subconscious mind, and I put that all in my subconscious mind training. And I share my concepts throughout these videos and on my Instagram. And I realize more and more as I go deeper into the work of my own subconscious, how much of an impact my thoughts and my feelings have on the environment and circumstance. I can relate just about everything that I experience in life to thoughts and feelings and emotions that are within that are a net result of what I am currently thinking or feeling about or past experiences. And as a result of this, I've been going around changing the meaning that I've been giving to certain circumstances that occur that are a net result of what's in my subconscious mind. And I'm interestingly evolving to realize that as I continuously change the meaning, I get access to new meaning, new information. And with that information, I can literally transform my external world. It's very powerful when you start to realize just how this stuff works. And that's why a whole chapter was dedicated to the subconscious mind and thinking we're rich and the concept called auto-suggestion. It's what you say when you talk to yourself and when you talk to others that determines how you feel and how you feel gets projected out into the world to attract and create certain kinds of circumstances and situations and opportunities in the environment. And as these opportunities, circumstances, and elements in your environment show up, how you respond to them further programs what's in your subconscious mind. And with a continuous process, you keep recreating over and over again that what is either related to what you're looking for or your vision or what is and always was in your subconscious mind based on past experiences or values and beliefs that you have. I highly recommend that you watch the video that I did last week on the Robert Diltz model. And as I mentioned in there, there's identity and values and beliefs. Identity is really how you believe yourself to be. It's your self-image. And your self-image, being that of one of you know, high level of self-confidence or low self-esteem or low confidence, creates the reality based on your thoughts and your feelings that you have based on this identity. And it's your values and beliefs that reveal to you, you know, you can take inventory of, as you just kind of navigate reality of the different values and beliefs that show up for you, and you can change them and you can make them more in alignment with your vision. So I highly recommend you watch that video. What we're going to do is we're going to go through a number of chapters, pretty much all the chapters in this book. And I pulled maybe like two or three quotes from each of them. And we're going to discuss them into detail and reflect back on my experiences and just about all the other stuff that I've covered in relation to subconscious mind programming and creating reality based on subconscious mind thus far. The secret of miracle power of infinite riches. You are here to lead the abundant of life, a life full of happiness, joy, health, and rich living. Begin now to release the riches of the treasure house within you. Release the riches of the treasure house within you. One of my favorite books is Acres of Diamonds by Russell Conwell. I did a discussion on it. I recommend you watch it. And the concept behind it is that every one of us right now is sitting on our own acres of diamonds. We have access to just about everything that we want to create in our life. And that is a manifestation of what is within ourself. So thus, we already have, to a certain degree, abundance consciousness. And the goal is to reflect deeper on these opportunities, to have gratitude towards them by acting upon them, by valuing them and putting our attention on them so that we can release the riches in the material form in the external world through the recognition and awareness that we put on them because they already exist. There's one of the things that 
I credit my success to in life, and that is the concept of resourcefulness. And resourcefulness means working with what you have right now, valuing what you have right now, realizing that you actually have everything you need right now to be able to create the results that you want. When you begin to value what you have right now and realize that you can work with it in very creative ways, your subconscious mind is going to reveal to you the how. You have to first believe it's possible. The real riches are within your subconscious mind. So the saying goes, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Problems now look like opportunities. Roadblocks now seem like stepping stones. Failures now reveal to you about yourself and what is within you and what needs to be adjusted within you so that you can move in a direction towards your vision. Hunches, inspiration, and ideas flow when you start to look at reality from this perspective, which is the reality perspective of the cause. In other words, you see yourself as the cause, the creator of your reality. Infinite intelligence in your subconscious can only do for you what you can do through you. Your thought and your feeling control your destiny. So you are a culmination of the thoughts and experiences and ideas, values, beliefs that you have accumulated over your lifetime. And all this information is being projected outwards to create and shape your reality by your thoughts and your feelings about your experiences and what's within yourself. And your experiences or how you see the external world, the meaning is given from within. And how you determine, or I should say, how you experience the determining factors of what can be done with that information, which is the stimulus that's from the external world, is going to determine where your attention and your awareness goes next. You are navigating reality. One of my favorite books is Reality Transurfing. I did a discussion on that. I recommend you watch it. The idea is that this is a space of variations. And what you polarize to, you give attention to. So that means what you put your attention on, that's where your energy flows. And you move into that direction, or they call it the life track. So then what are you polarizing uh, to? It's usually what's in your subconscious mind. We're made up of our conscious and our subconscious mind. Our subconscious mind is responsible for 95 to probably 99% of the manifestations and the projections in reality. And a lot of us are not aware of what we are creating. But one of the things we can become highly aware of is what we're polarizing ourselves to in the external world and realizing and understanding the kind of meaning we're giving to those circumstances, environment elements, people. And ask ourselves, is it related to our vision or not? Is it helpful? Is it uplifting? Is it inspiring? If it's not, it's probably going to go and reprogram or further program your subconscious mind to create those elements over and over again. Be careful when you affirm wealth, success, right action, and promotion, that you do it subsequently, deny what you, that you don't subsequently deny what you affirm. So there are times in our lives in the earlier stages where we want success, we want wealth, we want right action, but there's elements within our subconscious mind that denies the action or denies what we affirm, or gets us to look at what we are trying to create from a place of distaste. So you might say you want money, but you have anger and resentment towards those that have money. You might say you want wealth and success, but you're envious of those that have wealth and success. That's the feeling that's getting put outwards, broadcasted out of you, projected into reality, and creating a reflection of that. So what you might find is that because you are affirming wealth and also affirming negativity towards wealth, is that a mix and match of wealth is manifested in reality. You might seem to notice that people who have a lot of money are also evil and angry. That is a net result of the programming that is within. Now, I can speak from a lot of experience in this. After working with this information for many years, I take inventory of the kind of people, circumstances, and situations that I create in the external world, and I ask myself, 
Is this ideal? Is this from a place of abundance? Is this from a place of love? If not, what is the element that I'm creating within and projecting outwards onto others or the world? And then I change that through automation of, not automation, but auto-suggestion and subconscious mind reprogramming. The meaning changes. And then what I notice is that those people, I experience them differently. The environments, I experience them differently. Or I end up in different scenarios, different situations, in front of different people, in front of different environments that are more related. The work is done within. How to tap the miracle power at once that make you rich. Your thought is creative, and every thought tends to manifest itself. You can direct and steer your thoughts in the same way that you steer your car. Thoughts are things. Your thought image of wealth, success, and achievement is the magnet that attracts to you all the things that correspond with your thought image. How do you see yourself? How do you believe yourself to be? What do you imagine? One of the best exercises that we could do is create a list of criterias and even a vision board of the ideal person that you want to be. Perhaps it's a certain level of success. How do you see yourself? What is it going to feel like when you live that version of you? How does it feel? What will you be saying? How will you be dressed? Where will you be living? Who will you be around? What kind of experiences will you be having? If you reflect upon this and really go to work on understanding the elements that make up this ideal person that you aspire to be, which is within you, that is going to be projected outwards or materialized in the external world, if you make an effort to do this, then what you'll realize is that your subconscious mind will already find ways of recreating you to be that way. So thus, creating a vision board, creating affirmation statements, surrounding yourself with information that supports that ideal identity, the way you believe yourself to be, the way you would like to believe yourself to be, will further program your subconscious mind and materialize accordingly in the external world, in circumstance, environment, people, and even optimal action. The body is the instrument of the mind. So if you want to be able to take optimal action, action you've got to ask yourself, what would optimal action look like if it was run through by this ideal version of yourself? The quiet mind gets things done. Tell your body to be still and quiet. Your mind, by thinking to, of the infinite intelligence in your subconscious, which knows the answer. When your conscious mind is still and your body is relaxed, the wisdom of your subconscious will rise to the surface of the mind. Now, flow, or being lighthearted, is one of the ways that you want to carry yourself as you navigate reality. Moving from a place of excessive tension creates resistance, creates force. And what you put out comes back to you. It's reflected to you. The world reflects to you how you are navigating reality from within. Your energy and your thoughts within are reflected in the external world. Your thoughts within, your feelings within, are programmed based on what kind of information you're taking in or your self-image, your identity, the vision of how you see yourself. And we can override the negativity by creating an ideal vision. And then our subconscious mind will go about bringing forth that ideal vision. And what will happen is that the confidence and the faith that you will experience as you observe the materialization of this vision, or who you, self, who you believe yourself to be, the high version of yourself, will make you relaxed. You'll realize that this is a process. And what you'll find is this interesting golden thread of how life works. You evolve yourself within by your thoughts and your feelings by feeding your subconscious mind with empowerment and images and related information that drives you forward, that motivates you, that uplifts and inspires you. 
and it's recreated and manifested in the external world. And as a result of that, you relax. Now, if you're going about reality tense and you're creating the external world tense, which is a net result of going about navigating reality tense, then one of the things you want to do is practice things like meditation or relaxation or breathing exercises or conscious rejuvenation or whatever it takes to bring yourself back to a relaxed state. Another reason why we want to bring ourselves back to the relaxed state is that as a result of that, we won't find ourselves polarizing to an element that exists in the subconscious mind that plays out as theater in the external world, derailing us from our vision. We can catch ourselves. We can become more conscious and aware when we're moving into a different direction that is not in alignment and when we can readjust accordingly, thus putting our attention in a different direction, one that is more aligned with our vision, that gives us the good feelings that are in alignment with the ideal version of ourselves we want to create or our vision. And thus, that information will go in and program the subconscious mind, fill up the subconscious mind with that kind of information, and more and more, your reality will shift to be in alignment with your vision, or as I like to say, materialize based on what is within. Think of the infinite riches within your subconscious mind. Think of harmony, peace, joy, love, guidance, right action, success. All these are principles of life. And as you think of life more abundant, you activate the latent powers within you. Your subconscious will compel you to express the abundant life right here and now. Thoughts are things. Thoughts are things. Just about everything you see in the external reality, you could track back to a thought that you have within. If you're not aware, then what we want to do is make the subconscious or the unconscious conscious. As Carl Jung said, you don't become enlightened by imagining beings of light, but by making the darkness conscious. What are the dark elements within yourself that you can bring to the surface? and make peace with them, heal yourself, forgive yourself, release the shame and guilt that you have within yourself or towards others. Bring that to the surface and make peace with it, make it conscious. And as a result of that, you will radiate more peace, joy, love, and guidance. You'll be more relaxed. And when you're more relaxed, and more in a flow based, which by the way, is where challenge meets skill. Flow is an interesting concept. It's a thread that I run through all my trainings and uh, different programs that I teach and so forth, because it's the one thing that made the biggest difference in my life when it comes to creating success. I realized that as you navigate reality, the challenge is to overcome self and every action you take, you're really overcoming yourself, your limiting beliefs, your expanding beyond your comfort zone, you're stretching yourself to develop new skills and so forth. All of that is determined based on your motivation within the driving factors from within. And when you're in flow, you get excited, you rise up to the challenge. So it's a sweet spot where challenge meets skill, and that you stay with the challenge, and then you rise up to a higher challenge. How so? Well, one of the reasons is the subconscious mind reveals to you the way. When you're in flow, you're more likely to get the way. So thus, we want to ask ourselves, are we making a commitment every day in all that we do to stay in flow, to honor our flow, to value flow? Flow is where challenge meets skill. You've got your vision, that what you want to create. You have this ideal version of yourself that you believe yourself to be. And how you feel and how you think materializes in the external world. And if it's not in alignment, you might experience disconnect or fear or scarcity or challenge or any of these other emotions that are going to reveal to you about yourself. And when you're in a place of flow, you can respond rather than react from a place of understanding. Now, if you catch yourself reacting, again, we don't want to shame ourselves. We want to reflect back and say, why did we react? And by reacting, 
I'm talking about it more in a place where it throws you off, makes you angry, makes you frustrated, makes you stressed out. We can ask ourselves, perhaps after the circumstance has passed through and we have time to reflect, why did we react that way? And realize that something within ourselves, and we can go in and make peace with that part of ourselves. We can realize that the external world or circumstance played out like theater to reveal what's within ourselves. And when you go and make peace with that, which is within yourself, that circumstance does not show up again. And then you stay in the flow even longer. And as a result of staying in the flow, you enjoy this process. See, one of the key things about creating success or results is you can learn to enjoy this process. Not by saying, I force you to learn how to enjoy this process. But by being in flow, you'll start to automatically enjoy the process. Think about times where you are in flow. Musicians, artists, creatives, computer programmers, those that play video games, entrepreneurs, experience flow. And you can experience flow just about in everything you do. When you're connecting with people, when you're public speaking, when you're at the gym, when you're working out, when you're running, when you're engaging in a challenging activity that's very stimulating to you, you've experienced flow. The goal is to experience flow as much as you can. Because when you do that, the subconscious mind releases the information and the hows to evolve, to rise up to higher levels of challenge. And then you materialize your vision, that identity, how you see yourself will materialize based on it. How to get richer and how, how the rich get richer and how you will join them. The rich get richer for a simple reason, that the consciousness or awareness of wealth and the expectancy of more and more of God's riches, which are omnipresent, attract more and more wealth, health, and opportunities to the person who walks in that state of mind. When you have attracted some abundance, you find yourself in abundance-based environments, people, circumstances. If you've accumulated a certain degree of wealth, you'll find yourself around other individuals that have the wealth. You'll find yourself in environments and circumstances that are rich and abundant in the wealth. That information is going in and programming your subconscious mind and bringing more out. So how can we use this to our advantage? Well, one of the things that I really made sure that I was cognizant of in my journey towards rising up in entrepreneurship and creating success is that I surrounded myself with people, circumstances, and environments that had a high degree of abundance and wealth consciousness. And like osmosis, that information went into my subconscious mind and my thoughts began to change. My views about wealth and money, disempowering thoughts related to that started to just kind of go away. And I started to get infused with abundance and wealth-based thoughts. And tasks like selling and entrepreneurship became natural behaviors that started to flow out of me. So thus, the rich get richer because they stay in abundance consciousness. They're around people that talk about money, that have money. They surround themselves with information that further builds upon this. In my journey of entrepreneurship, I've met a lot of wealthy individuals who have created a lot of success and started out from humble beginnings. And one of the common threads that we discuss all the time is how their conversations with themselves and others have changed and evolved over the years to be in direct reflection of the level of earnings. So in earlier stages of their journey, there was a lot of lack, limiting beliefs, and anger and scarcity-based conversations surrounding money and wealth. And as they continuously rise up to success, they found themselves around other successful people. They found that their conversations were more on abundance-based topics and wealth generation topics. And they put their attention on awareness, on personal development and growth. And all that information went into the subconscious mind and recreated, rematerialized it in its equivalent in the external world. The beauty is that you have YouTube, you have programs, and you have people and support group available to you right now. As I mentioned earlier, all the riches, all the abundance is in front of you right now. Do you value it? You are sitting in front of or 
on top of your own acres of diamonds. You can access this information. You can connect with these people and surround yourself in that kind of consciousness. And you'll start to notice that you're materializing more success. And if you keep with it, your success will keep increasing. A rich person walks in the mental attitude that wealth is like the air he or she breathes. Having this state of mind, the person attracts more and more riches of all kinds. So walks in or walks in the mental attitude that wealth is like the air he or she breathes. What does that mean? Obviousness. Now, not demanding, but obviousness, subconscious obviousness. You know, the common thread we discuss through all these videos is how you believe reality to work is going to determine the results you have. How you believe you're going to create success is going to determine how you go about creating success. How you believe yourself to be is going to be what is revealed to you in the external world. Thus, the obviousness of wealth that a person has a success consciousness, which by the way, might take a bit of time to accumulate, or it could happen instantaneously if you remove yourself from an environment and place yourself in an abundance conscious environment, becomes you and it becomes obvious and it becomes natural. Now I'll speak from experience in this. Creating results like financial results now is far easier than it was five or 10 years ago. And one of the key distinctions I've noticed about myself is that I have an enormous faith when I go about doing the initiatives that I do in business. Now, this faith all of a sudden creates certain circumstances, opportunities, environments, people, and whatever that are optimal. Somehow they show up. Somehow I take the optimal action and it materializes into success. Now, the interesting thing is if I ask myself, is it because I have more opportunity now than before? Is it because I'm more knowledgeable or skillful now than ever before? Well, I've accumulated more knowledge, more experience, yes. But one of the things that I notice is that the abundance consciousness, the success consciousness that I have right now, automatically gets me to look at things differently than I did before. And when I reflected back on previous stages in my life, I've had similar opportunities like this. I just didn't look at it the same way. And I wasn't able to execute it this on it the same way. I didn't take the optimal action because it didn't seem obvious to me. God gave you richly all the things to enjoy in this universe. Life itself is a gift to you. The whole world was here before you were born. Believe and expect the riches of the infinite and invariably the best will come to you. So believe and expect the riches. That's one of the key elements here. Believe and expect the riches. If you're looking to create wealth, if you're looking to create success in the financial arena, then you have to believe and expect, not demand, because that's coming from a place of force, but more an expect. It is who you are. Now, you can program your subconscious mind to become more believing, to be in this place of expecting through auto suggestions, through affirmations, through visualizations, and being around others, mentors, peer groups, a mastermind that see reality that way. In other words, they already have the success and they believe it to be and expect it to be obvious. And when you're around them, listen. Just be open and listen, take in the information. What you'll feel is that they're feeding that part of you that you want to become. That level of abundance and riches that you see yourself, you allow that information to go in. Now in the beginning, you might feel a little uncomfortable. You might even want to talk and argue, but understand something. What's really happening is you're incorporating and taking in abundance consciousness. And it might be going up against other information in there that is maybe more in a scarcity consciousness that you've learned, which is not you, but you learned it unknowingly, 
through information, experiences, and so forth. And there might be a little bit of reprogramming resistance going on within. You might resist what they're saying. But by being open and realizing that if a person has results and they communicate, a lot of times what's happening is they're infusing in you. A lot of times they're not even intentionally doing it. But just by their words and their vibe and their energy, they're infusing in you that abundance consciousness. If you're open to it and you stay receptive to it, you'll start, as, you'll start to notice that you feel different. You'll start to do things differently. You'll start to think differently. How to claim your right to infinite riches now. Resentment and hostility are mental poisons that rob you of vitality, enthusiasm, and energy. The answer is to open the mind and heart to the influx of divine love and to realize that others really do care and love you, bringing about a healing and a transformation. When you open up your heart to the world and people, and it's from a place of condition, you might get hurt if they don't respond to you the way that you want them to respond to you. But one of the things we have to remember is that our goal here is to develop unconditional love, which is something we develop ourselves to. And the knee-jerk reaction, if we're not orienting ourselves towards unconditional love, is to have resentment and hostility to the person that you love that is not giving you what you want. All that does is that resentment and hostility goes within you, creates certain identity elements deep within your subconscious, values and beliefs, and projects outward a certain kind of energy that creates your reality accordingly. So resentment and hostility are referred to as mental poisons because they rob you of the abundance consciousness. They rob you of the love, the energy, the vitality that you already have within you, that is released from you, that materializes in the external world. Take an inventory of the areas of your life where you have resentment, hostility towards others, circumstance, money, and so forth. And ask yourself, how can you resolve this? Auto-suggestion, subconscious mind, reprogramming, making peace, forgiving yourself and others. If you have these, it's important to not beat yourself up. Remember, you had learned these things from the external world. It is not you. Who you are is a person of abundance. You learned these kind of things. These are learned helplessness elements. And by recognizing that they're there, you have now made the darkness conscious. And you can change these values and beliefs. You can change the way you look at things and how you feel about them. You have the power. You have to first believe it's possible. And your subconscious mind is going to reveal to you the way. No matter what has happened in the past, you can change it now. One of the things that we do if we don't have a good understanding of what's going on in our subconscious mind, and we haven't gotten to a certain degree of making the unconscious conscious, is that we recreate our future or our presence or the present state from our past. A lot of people navigate reality who live like that and paint their reality from their past, and they don't realize they're doing it. And the same circumstances and scenarios continuously repeat themselves over and over again, like theater, revealing to them about themselves. So what can we do about this? Well, we can heal our past. And there's various techniques like timeline regression, subconscious mind reprogramming. One of the things that I do is if something in my awareness, and I've done a lot of work on this on myself, makes me feel a certain way that I felt in the past, I write that down. And then I track myself back to where I've experienced that in the past. And I make peace with that part of myself by visualizing myself making peace with it, visualizing myself comforting myself in that past scenario, understanding that you know if it was harm that someone did to me, that they also were not conscious of their behaviors. You know, as Jesus said in the Bible, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Their darkness was not conscious to them, and they did the best that they could. And that's okay. Forgive them. And from there, once you've done that, you'll start to feel better. 
and you'll start to create your present from your future or your vision. See, as mentioned, one of the most important things we could do is craft an identity, a person that we want to be, this ideal version of ourselves, which is who we are, unmaterialized and will materialize. Or a vision board of what we want to create in our life, success, and so forth. And then live from that place. Navigate reality from that place. Optimize based on that vision. The only thing that can hold you back from doing this is attachment to the past. And it usually shows up as fear, indecision, or doubt related to the vision. So if you've created your vision board and you doubt it, you fear it, you have indecision about it, it's probably something in your past that you have to go and heal. Once you go and do this, you have more of a confidence and faith in that vision. I know this because I speak from experience on this because that's one of the reasons why now I'm able to materialize faster the success I want based on a vision board or how I see myself to be. It's because I released myself from a lot of limiting factors from my past that prevented me from materializing something that is in a higher state of abundance that I would like to achieve. How miracle thought forms will increase your wealth. Adopt a new attitude towards money, realizing you are entitled to be richly compensated for your work, whether it be writing, teaching, gardening, or whatever. Think of all the good you can do when money is circulating freely in your life. Okay, think of all the good you can do when money is circulating freely in your life. The money that you earn is a net result of compensation for the good work and creative thinking that you have, the value you create for others. That's how you create money, is by creating value for others. You know, as Earl Nightingale said in The Stranger's Secret, if you believe that you can enrich yourself by deluding others, you can end only by deluding yourself. And if you have any views surrounding money like that, realize that there's better ways of doing things. You can create money the way it was intended to be created in the first place, which is by giving value, by rendering service, by creating something that is needed and useful. You can put your attention and your awareness on that. You can stimulate your mind of the creative ways that you can serve others, and the money will start to come to you. Because money is exchange for exchange. So we want to increase the ability that we have to put out value. Now, again, this is how we use our subconscious mind. Trust that you have within you the ability to generate value, the ability to create something that is needed and useful. Trust it. Allow your subconscious mind from a state of flow to generate that idea from you. Now, what you'll find is that if you start to look at reality like this, as you go about, you're going to get more ideas and you're going to get viable ideas, ideas that will actually translate into money because they're going to be valuable ideas, not ego-based ideas in which you believe you are entitled to money, demand money as a result of something that you create, but something that is actually of value to others. Remember, in order to earn money, you have to create value for others. That's the best way to do it. It's actually the easiest way to do it because there is no resistance. There's no trickery. There's no anger. There's no resentment. It's fair. You create value for others. Others will be happy to buy and they will receive the results of the value you create and they'll pay you for it. Claim that you are always using money wisely, judicious, judiciously and constructively for your own good and for that of all men and women everywhere. Constantly claim also that the infinite reveals better ways in which you can serve. Resourcefulness. Just about everything you do in, when it comes to money is either an investment in yourself, in your future, or a fair exchange of value. So you use money wisely. Somebody creates value for you. You give them money in exchange for that value. You enjoy that value and you have gratitude towards that. So if you go to a restaurant or you buy some clothes or you purchase a new car, have gratitude towards that money that you have invested. Have gratitude. Realize that, you know, whatever amount you paid for that, 
that there was maybe a lot of people in the background that worked diligently to serve you, to create a faculties, through effort, through trial and error, reflect upon that. See, the goal here is to place yourself in abundance consciousness. And one of the things that I'm really reflecting upon as we go through this discussion is my own understandings of abundance consciousness and the depths and magnitude and the power of gratitude. So one of the things that I do is when I buy something is I reflect when I give the money of the value that I am receiving as a result of giving the, the, the money to the person or the company. And I realize just how much effort, ingenuity, and creativity, and love has gone into what I'm buying. And that what I'm really doing is I'm thanking them. I'm giving them life. I'm giving them something that they can enjoy. They can serve themselves with. They can feed themselves with. They can enjoy life with as a result of this amazing product or service, the value that they've been giving me. And I could have done it in a way where I could have gone out and invested many years to try to create that. But what I'm really paying for is somebody else's efforts, okay? somebody else's long efforts to go ahead and create that. And I value stuff like that. Why would you do something like that? Because what that does is it increases your abundance consciousness. You start to realize the power of money from a healthy perspective. And then when you go out and try to accumulate more wealth, what happens is you navigate reality from that perspective. You say, just as others serve me by giving me product or service that's needed and useful, I create products that are needed and useful. And this reality in which I navigate is fair. I create products and services and earn money, and I could choose the amount of money I want to earn as a result of the value that I create. And I spend this money, I invest this money to receive value as well from others who also did the same. How to say the exact words that will bring you money. Think of riches of all kinds and the immense wealth of the world and your subconscious will respond to your habitual thinking. So really reflect back on what we've been discussing. A large part of it is having gratitude for the fact that money or wealth is a net result of the value you create. And just about everything in your life right now is because others have created value for you. The food on your table, the roof over your head, the car that you drive, the clothes that you have were substance, products, services that were created by others for you. And you didn't have to do all that work. All you had to do is pay some money and you got that. So there's constant examples and ways that we could show gratitude for the abundance in our life. Now, when you do that, when you reflect upon this, you're having a conversation. Anytime you show gratitude and thanks and praise, you're having a conversation with yourself. That conversation with yourself is going to materialize in the external world. It's going to generate a feeling. And thoughts are things. And you're going to create your version of that accordingly. Your subconscious mind will further bring forth additional thinking related to this. If you have a conversation with somebody and it's about success consciousness, you ever notice how you get stimulated by even more ideas? Where do those ideas come from? Where do those positive statements related to what's being discussed comes from? It's related to what's within your subconscious mind. Now, that's one of the things that I've learned as I've gone through these videos, these discussions that I've had with you, is, and I mentioned this a few times, that I allow my subconscious to reflect back on the quotes. I look at the quotes, I look at the statements in the book, and I reflect back on my own experiences. It's a way of solidifying and dimensionalizing my experiences, what I already know, into a way that I understand it even better. And as a result of it, I'm able to reflect back and give you a multidimensional view or an experience that I have. That's all within the subconscious mind. So the more you focus on wealth consciousness, abundance consciousness from a lighthearted, joyous, flow-based, not from a place of resentment and anger, 
the more you'll find yourself communicating with ideas and ways to create it. You'll find that the creativity will just flow from you. It'll come from your subconscious. Your conscious mind is the pen with which you inscribe your true desires in your subconscious. Think quietly and with interest of each desire separately, water, watering it and nurturing it with faith and expectancy. So this is applicable then in our auto suggestions, the affirmation statements, or a great exercise to do that has worked really well for me in the past is creating a perfect day, writing in detail what a ideal day looks like for you in which you have achieved what you're looking to achieve from the moment you wake up till you go to sleep, write it down, reflect upon that story. What you're really doing with that is you're impressing the subconscious mind. You're saying that is me. That is how I live reality. And what you're doing is you're watering it and nurturing it with faith and expectancy based on how you feel about it. And then what will happen is you'll start to get insights, perspectives, behaviors will change. You'll notice certain circumstances and environmental changes in the external world. It'll begin to materialize. So you have a lot of opportunity to feed and nurture your dreams, your goals, your vision. The goal is to submerse yourself with thinking thoughts and feelings that are related to your vision, to stimulate your subconscious mind, to further impress your subconscious mind, to allow the subconscious mind to do the work to bring it forth. Never engage in thinking of lack, limitation, loneliness, and frustration. Why so? Because if you engage in this kind of thinking, you materialize it. It will show up in the external world. So what do we do? We heal ourselves. We make peace with our past. We look at reality from more of an empowering perspective. And as a result of it, we won't automatically have thoughts of lack, limitation, loneliness, and frustration. If you found yourself experiencing these thoughts, write them down. Ask yourself where it comes from. Go to work on them and realize that just one way of looking at reality is from these elements. And you can change the way you look at reality. And when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Obstacles will seem like opportunities. People will show up automatically. You will attract the right people, circumstances, and so forth because you're putting out that energy. You're putting out that vibe. How to make use of a psychic treasure map. When you're competing with others for a contract, assignment, or position, avoid anxiety and tension by affirming, I accept this assignment or something far more wonderful according to the riches of the infinite for me. So when you're creating a business or you're doing something and you experience any kind of tension or competition from the external, realize that as you believe, so it shall be done unto you. You believe that it exists and therefore it exists. If you open up your mind to say that you're going to get it from a place of joy, bliss, and ease, then the possibility will reveal itself. And a lot of times I find by working with this is that when you go out there to create a certain level of success and you keep an open mind that there's a better way to achieve success than you can possibly imagine, that your subconscious, you consciously imagine, and that your subconscious mind will do the work for you, you'll actually end up finding that way. But you have to be first open to it. And you'll even find a better way. Now, this is something that was covered actually in Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich in the Mastermind Principle. He said, when two people come together in the spirit of harmony, they're able to create something even better than what they each thought they would create. And consider this, being in spirit of harmony with your subconscious mind is what we're talking about right here. So this works, obviously, when you connect with others and create this dynamic as well as, uh, you know, and that's using the mastermind principle, as well as within yourself. But you have to trust that you'll come up with something even better. And then you're going to realize that there's a, always a way to achieve the end result that's even more harmonious than you could possibly imagine based on your current state of consciousness. And as your consciousness rises up, you're going to find even better ways. So this is not only a process to help you understand what's going on in your subconscious mind and create what you want. But again, as going into discussion as to what Carl Jung was mentioning, 
It's a way of making the darkness conscious, putting light on the darkness, areas that you don't know about yourself, to realize that you have even more power accessible to you. And most of it is subconscious. How the law of infinite increases multiples your wealth. From a clear mental picture of what you want to be, to do, or to have, know that the power and the wisdom of your subconscious will back you up. Persevere and be determined to become what you want to be. Your mental picture will be developed in your subconscious mind and become objectified. So again, there's our vision or the ideal day, however you want to do it. And that the living from the perspective, the meditating upon it, the putting your attention and awareness on it and observing as the world materializes to reflect it. The only thing that could prevent this from happening is programming in your subconscious mind in which you're going to need to evolve. Or if your attention and awareness goes on things that are not related to that vision, and then you get moved down a different thread in the space of variables, again, referring back to reality transurfing. How to open the gateway to automatic riches and walk into a life of luxury. Changed attitudes change everything. If a person places emphasis on the spirit of forgiveness and goodwill to all, and also forgives himself for harboring thoughts of failure, lack, and resentment, and then pours life, love, energy, and vitality into his thoughts of promotion, riches, expansion, honor, prestige, and recognition, his deeper mind will respond with compound interest, and his desert will rejoice and blossom as the rose. So as mentioned a number of times, and I'll continuously remember this and mention it to you, is that the outer world is a reflection of your inner world. So the energy that you put out, the feeling that you put out, materializes as a reflection of what's within. When you think of money, when you think of wealth, do you think of it from a place of full abundance and healing and well-being and value creation and fair exchange? Or is there a part of you that has resentment and anger and fear and lack surrounding money? Because if it does, it will materialize so. You can take an inventory of the current state of your money, whatever it is, your current level of wealth or debt or whatever it is, and you can reflect back within and realize that it comes from something within. And then all you have to do is change the way you look at it, change your attitude towards money by reprogramming the subconscious mind. Then what will happen is your situation will start to change. And I could speak from experience on this because I'd mentioned this many times. When I was 24 years old, I was in $50,000 of debt. And when I read Thinking Grow Rich, one of the first things that I did was I changed my attitude around money around. And just like that, I started to attract more opportunities. My income started going up just like that. And then what happened is I found myself out of debt and I've never been in debt since because what has changed was myself within. I evolved my perspectives, my beliefs surrounding money and wealth has changed. And as a result of it, I continuously build upon it. Now, here's the cool thing about it. As a result of it changing, I'm finding more and more information to validate the abundance, the well-being and the value that I'm associating with money. And there is no proof in the external world of lack thereof. Whereas in back in the days when I had the scarcity mentality surrounding money, I would see a lot of proof related to that because it was a materialization both ways from within. How to choose your wealth goals and receive them right away. Your whole life consists of a series of choices. All of your experiences are the sum total of your choices, cause and effect. What do you choose? Why do you choose it? Now, this is interesting because why do we choose something? Well, we can make conscious choices and a lot of our choices are subconscious. Why do we choose it? We could recreate failure based on subconscious programming that orients ourselves towards failure. Or we can reprogram our identity, evolve our identity, change our values and beliefs around, essentially reprogram our subconscious mind. So the choices that we have to make every day are automatic towards that what is related to our vision. Wisdom is knowing the difference, and we make a lot of decisions every day. And you couldn't possibly imagine how many decisions you make. You might be conscious of some of the decisions that you make, but a lot of them are subconscious. You make them really fast. Where to put your attention on what to say, 
who to talk to, what to do. Those are all subconscious decisions, subconscious choices. So it's then important to journal and keep inventory of the choices you make and not shame yourself, but understand yourself so you can evolve yourself. Your power to choose is your highest prerogative, enabling you to select from the infinite treasure house within you all the blessings of life. In failing to choose for yourself, you are actually saying that you're going to let the mass mind full of irrational fears, superstitions, and ignorance of all kinds make choices for you. So you've got to direct your mind. You've got to control your mind. Your conscious mind guards and directs your subconscious. In the beginning, in the earlier stages when we don't know this, we allow the external world to program us. We don't realize the implications of information going into our subconscious mind and how it programs us to behave in certain ways that might not be optimal for us. That's the responsibility of the conscious mind. The conscious mind is there to guard, nurture, and protect and be aware and allow information to go into the subconscious mind that is healing, uplifting, rejuvenating, and that what is related to the vision. Then the subconscious mind goes to work to bring it forth. It's a subconscious mind that does the creativity and most of the heavy lifting, the attracting, the action generation, the words to say, the feelings that bring forth, the navigating through reality. Most of that is subconscious. How to hear the gentle, invisible voices that can guide you to wealth. Your subconscious mind seeks to protect you at all times and prompts you at all times. So this is, this is interesting. Your external world reveals to you about yourself. And if you, as Steve Jobs said this in his commencement speech, don't allow the noise of others' opinions to drown out your own inner voice, you'll start to actually be able to listen to your inner voice. This is something that I found that I've been working with for the last few years. I've been removing out of my awareness elements that prevent me from listening to my own inner voice. I learned to understand myself, listen to myself more and more. And that voice speaks very clearly to me. Decisions and ideas and optimizations just spring up from within because I've learned to listen to myself. When you are relaxed and your mind is at peace, the inner voice of intuition is heard clearly and distinctly. This is another reason why we mention being in flow and operating from a place of peace and creating a place where you can, an environment where you can have a clear mind, where you can have clarity. That's because from that perspective, you're not getting drowned out by the voice of others' opinions and the external world and so forth. And you're more tuned into yourself and you'll be able to listen to yourself and you'll be able to impulsively do the right things to move you forward towards your vision. You will receive answers and directions from your subconscious according to what you meditate on. So the more you meditate on your vision, the more you surround yourself with information that's empowering, that's related to your vision, the more you nurture, guard, and protect your subconscious mind, the more you are aware of how you communicate with yourself and others, and you do it from a place of real charisma, okay, power, presence, and warmth. I did a discussion on that. Olivia Fox Cabane's book, I'll put a link in the description. The more you do it from that perspective, those three things, moving forward, doing it from a place of presence and warmth, the more you're going to find that you're going to live reality from that perspective because all that information is going into your subconscious mind and bringing it forth. And when you speak and communicate and nurture the subconscious mind in a kind, loving way, it will speak up. It will bring you the hunches, the inspirations, because you are tuning into it. You're protecting it, you're guarding it, and you're encouraging it. Artists, poets, inventors, and other creative people listen to the inner voice of intuition. They astonish the world by the beauties and glories drawn from the storehouse within. How Your Money Dreams Can Make You Rich, The Secret of Psychic Osmosis You are unique. There is no one in the world like you. You are endowed with your own particular qualities, abilities, and capabilities. Now this is beautiful because everybody has within them the ability to create something that is needed and useful that people will pay for. This is what we talk about when we mention the Ikigai. Doing what you love to do, what you are good at, 
what the world needs and what you can get paid to do. You can discover what that thing is. Maybe there's individuals that go through life that never discover this, but for everybody, this exists. And I remember in a certain stage in my life, I didn't believe it was possible until I started coming across information like this, where it was emphasizing that you do have a unique ability, something that you do really well, that the world can benefit from, that you can get paid to do. And over the years, I started to cultivate those things. And in different stages of my life, they were different things. And for now, it's what I have experienced that I share with others. That's my unique ability and cultivating my communication skills, which, you know, to a lot of people say that I have really good communication skills and that I'm natural at it. And perhaps that's one of my unique areas that I choose to cultivate it. Maybe I'm already to a certain degree good at it, but it is what the world needs. It is what I love to do. And it is what I get paid to do. And it is something that is from me and is very natural. And you have one of those things. It might not be communication. It might be a certain craft or a certain skill. Everybody has one of those. When you learn to listen to yourself and trust and ask your subconscious mind, what is it? You'll start to be moved and motivated down the path to reveal that to you. Confidence means with faith. Have faith that when you call upon infinite intelligence, it responds to you. You build up your faith when you realize that thoughts are creative, when you feel you attract or what you feel you attract and what you imagine you become. So when you feel confident, you navigate the reality with confidence and you receive the reflection of the confidence within, which is faith, the bringing forth of the vision. So thus, if you feel in situations you don't have the confidence, you have to take inventory of that, note that down, and ask yourself, ask yourself why. Because how you do one thing is how you do everything. If you find yourself not having confidence in a certain scenario, it might also show up in another scenario. It's just wearing a different mask. Evolving your self-esteem and self-confidence and self-worth is very important. Cultivating self-love, and a good book to read is You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. It's very important because that's the energy that you put out. And when you have a vision... What you want is to bring forth your vision. And the energy that you want to put out is faith and confidence. If you're trying to sell something, whether it be the house or a new idea, realize what you are seeking is also seeking you. Now, to actually internalize that and believe that with 100% conviction and faith is to have a certain level of confidence in the process that we're talking about here. Trusting the power of your subconscious mind. So we have to learn to trust the power of our subconscious mind if we not already have done so. Now, there's countless experiences we've had in our life where our subconscious mind has helped us. Go back and take inventory and reflect upon those certain scenarios and situations and circumstances where your subconscious mind has come to your aid. And upon reflecting upon that, you'll start to realize that you already have the power and that you can tap into it even more. You can build a better relationship with your subconscious mind. How to use the amazing law that reveals all money secrets. You are the king and absolute monarch over your thoughts, images, ideas, and responses. You can fall in love with a grander, greater, nobler concept of yourself by imagining you are doing what you love to do. Become absorbed and engrossed in the mental movie and you will achieve your goal. Love of your ideal casts out all fear. So in order to attract abundance, wealth, well-being. You have to put out the energy of abundance, well-being, wealth. You put it out. This is why we said being in certain kinds of around, in environments and surrounding yourself with certain people who have already achieved that, you will receive that information. It will program your subconscious mind and you'll notice that you'll start to behave differently. What you'll also notice is fears start going away. You'll start acting a lot more boldly. You'll be very surprised. In the beginning, this might jar your senses. You can't imagine yourself doing certain things that you were once afraid to do. But then you'll start to acclimate to that. You'll start to realize that the fears were being reinforced by recreation or rematerialization in the external world that was what was within, which is the fears. And so now that you are embracing more abundance, that's materializing in the external world. How to charge yourself with money magnetism. Nothing can bring you peace but the triumph of principles. Use your mind the right way by feeding it 
with godlike ideas and you will experience serenity and tranquility. Think right, feel right, act right, do right, and pray right. So by now in this video and through any discussions that I've had regarding the subconscious mind, it's pretty apparent that the key here is the inner world reflects the outer world. The outer world is a reflection of the inner world. And the outer world reveals to you about yourself. And if you change the inner world around, which is largely subconscious, the external world changes. So what you think reveals to you the magnitude and the ability that you are able to create in the external world that what you desire. Again, to emphasize that, look at your vision, look at your goals. Do you believe yourself actually being able to achieve those goals? Well, we already know through the discussions we had on Neville Goddard's book that if you continuously replay and imagine yourself experiencing the wish fulfilled, you'll start to feel a confidence. There's a certain point where you can feel it. And that's when everything changes right there. That's when you start to attract the right people. You'll start to do behaviors that are more optimal. And you'll start to produce results. You'll start to see proof, indicators in the external world that your idea, your vision is manifesting. It's being brought forth and your confidence goes up. And then when you achieve that result, you reflect back on that entire process and realize it's the same thing over and over again. It's the energy that you put out. And the energy that you put out is based on the thoughts and feelings that you have. And you can change the thoughts and feelings. There's no rule that says that the thoughts and feelings that you have are absolute. We reflect back on how we got those feelings. We evolve. And a lot of it has to do when it comes to negative feelings is forgiving, letting go of the past. Forgiving and letting go of resentment is one of the biggest things because then what happens is that the energy that goes out of you is that from a place of love and abundance. And whatever you put your attention on, the vision manifests like so, because the vision is usually from a place of abundance. When you sit down and you create a vision board, you put all these things on there of what you desire to have, experiences that you want to have, which are from a place of wealth, abundance, prosperity. And the energy that creates that is from within. So the subconscious mind already knows what it wants to create. It wants to create those elements. And it's looking to bring it forth. But if within you there's resentment and fear and any kind of negativity towards the external world, especially those items, then what's going to be brought forth is a variation of that or the fears, the insecurities, the uncertainties, the doubts, and the limitation or the scarcity thinking instead of the vision. Now, again, when that happens, we take inventory of that and we change ourselves within. We change the way we look at things because then the things we look at change and we start to feel good about those things and we navigate ourselves towards creating the vision. That's the creative process. No one can disturb you but yourself. It is not what people say or do that annoys you. It is your own reaction or your thoughts about it. Now, as you go about evolving and when you create a vision, you have to remember this. If it's a vision that's really grand, really big, and something that is beyond your current state, the environment is going to reveal to you about yourself the inconsistency probably even faster than ever before. And a lot of people don't realize that that's really what's happening. And they might find themselves polarizing on that thing that annoys them a little too much. So if it annoys you at that time and you get thrown off your center, realize that that will pass. Step back, reflect upon it, and understand it's the universe teaching you how to get your vision. And make peace with that aspect within yourself. And then you'll find that that goes away and your vision will be brought forth. How to automatically reap an abundant harvest of golden blessings. Practice conveying ideas of prosperity, success, and wealth to your subconscious mind prior to sleep. One of the times when we are the most suggestive is prior to going to sleep. And that's why in my subconscious mind training, I recommend listening to the audios that you create following my process before you go to sleep. Also, when you wake up, the first thing I do when I wake up is I read my affirmations. That calibrates my mind. That goes into my subconscious mind and says, this is what I would like you to create today. And before going to sleep, what you take in before you're going to sleep, and that's why it's always important to make peace and well-being within yourself before going to sleep, because that goes into your subconscious mind, and it impacts your dreams and so forth, and it goes and programs itself and brings forth. So always, before you go to sleep, implant the ideas of prosperity, well-being, health, success, and you'll find that you'll navigate 
from that perspective better the next day. Approve of yourself. You are a child of the infinite and heir to all of life riches. As you praise the qualities, powers, talents, and abilities in others, they will rise to the occasion and you will find that they're ready, that they really steer up the gifts of God within them. So one of the things that I found when it comes to coaching and consulting that I've been doing for the last few years, and even leadership, is that I have to transform myself within and they transform. That's how real leadership works. You know, we know this in NLP, you go first. But from the place of the subconscious mind, when you see them a certain way, it's really based on your transformation within. So when you encounter somebody, and let's say they don't fit the role yet, you have to see them as that ideal person. And you have to transform yourself within till you believe them to be that way, and they will become that way. And if they choose not to be that way, then you know they'll move on to a fit that's right for them. But if they remain there and they transform, then you know that you have somebody that continuously wants to grow and you keep repeating the process over and over again. How to call upon the healing presence to bring the riches you want. Love always frees. Love is not possessive. When you love another, whether wife or husband, you love to see the other happy, joyous, and free. You love to see the other as the other ought to be. Why is that? Because it's within you. If you don't see yourself like this and you don't cultivate yourself to be like this, you won't organically express it that way. And how you look at others, your significant other, those that are close to you, reveals to you about yourself. If you do the work and evolve your relationship and see them from a place of love, well-being, happy, and joyous, you also heal yourself within. You also reprogram your subconscious mind. Maybe you come from hardship and certain experiences of how you thought relationships should be. And then you find yourself recreating the theater with your current partner. All that's doing is re-emphasizing that programming in the subconscious mind and bringing it forth again and again. And you can move on to another relationship, but until you heal yourself, that will continuously play itself out over and over again. So thus, it's better to take the opportunity and reprogram your subconscious mind in your current relationship by loving the person and caring for the person, whether it's your wife, husband, kids, and so forth. Do the exercise. You know, it might seem a little challenging in the beginning because we're programming the subconscious mind. We're changing the paradigm around. But you'll start to internalize it more and more, and you'll start to materialize it in them as so, and you'll get better and better at it, and you'll keep moving that relationship into a higher and higher quality. How to start living like a king almost overnight. You go where your vision is. Whether you give your, whatever you give your attention to, your subconscious will magnify and multiply in your experience. So what is this reality then? It's a projection from what's within in the subconscious mind, largely. You can consciously bring things forth. You know, you physically do things, you consciously make decisions, but a lot of it is subconscious. Most of the reality is subconscious created. So thus, keep your mind on your vision, assume the wish fulfilled, visualize yourself achieving the results, focus on your affirmation, or do what I do, which is one of my favorite things I'd learned from Earl Nightingale's Strangest Secret. Write your number one chief aim on a card and carry with it. Carry it with you wherever you go and read it often if you find yourself, your mind going in a different direction that's not related to your vision. And your subconscious mind will go back to creating that which you're looking to create. Claim all your good now. Remember, you do not really create anything. All you do is give form and expression to that which really always was, now is, and ever shall be. So all we're doing is we're projecting onto reality. We're materializing based on within. The creation part is really the imagination within and holding on to it till it is materialized in the external world. It's a different way of looking at things. But it's one of the ways that I found to be the most empowering is all in the external world is a reflection from within. Okay, shifting back to the cause frame, all of the external world is a reflection of what is within. And you can start small and you can test this out to a small degree with a few things. And then as you start to build confidence in the process of how it works, you can raise the bar on your vision, achieve even higher levels of success. After being able to reflect back on my life when I encountered Thinking Grow Rich back in 2004 and this knowledge and really went to work on it, 
I realized that that's all I was doing is it worked for me. I got out of the $50,000 debt that I was in. And then I tried it again and again and again and refined the process and kept refining it. And that's one of my fun, really kind of meaningful experiences in life is this whole process of rematerializing the external world the way I believe from within, going within myself and adjusting it. It's kind of like a fun game if you see it this way. And it can be very motivating and it can be very inspiring. And beware of the two thieves. If you are indulging in remorse over past mistakes or are worrying about the future, you should be aware that these two thieves rob you of vitality, vitality, discernment, and peace of mind. So the theme here is to let go of the past, forgive the past, free yourself from the past, have faith that you did the right thing, trust yourself, and know that from that perspective, you can access what is already in front of you right now, the acres of diamonds, your future that will be materialized, that will be brought forth by focusing on it and observing the world transform, rematerialize to bring it forth. And anytime you come across resistance during this process, know that it is something from your past that is reorienting you in your subconscious to recreate something that is not in alignment. And we can reprogram our subconscious mind to bring it forth. And the key areas here that rob us is essentially remorse and resentment and guilt and shame. So we want to be really aware of these powerful emotions because they hold us back. And we want to replace this with faith, love, prosperity, abundance, consciousness, well-being for ourselves and everybody. Okay, this is important. Everybody. If you really want to create the dream life beyond your wildest desires that you can possibly ever imagine or rise yourself up to that ability, you have to remember this. Everybody is a reflection of who you are. How you believe they are is within. And there's a few people that achieve this kind of level of mastery, but this is one of the areas where if we keep culting it, cultivating it, we achieve the ranks of the great ones that can do this. And that is to forgive and understand that everyone is revealing to you about yourself and what needs to be done within yourself. And then all you got to do is evolve yourself and you watch as reality changes. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.